In this problem, we're trying to find the rectangle with the largest area that we can fit inside a circle. So what I've done is I put the circle with the center uh, at the uh, origin of a coordinate system. That means uh, if we use X and Y as coordinates of this point, the width of the rectangle would be 2X. The height here would be 2y, so the area would be 2x times 2y, or 4xy. Now, because that has two variables in it, and we want one variable for our function, as usual, we go to the Pythagorean theorem. x squared plus y squared equals capital R squared. I move the x squared over and take the square root. I wrote it to the half because I'm getting ready to take a derivative and I substitute that in for the y up here. Now, when I take the derivative, I'm going to have to use the product rule. So the derivative of a with respect to x, the derivative of the first part here is 4 times the second part, plus 4x times the derivative of this. Now this involves the chain rule. The half comes down, this lowers to negative a half, and since r is a constant, the derivative of the inside is negative 2x. Now I'm going to uh, divide out the, the 2 into this 2 up here, put the derivative equal to 0. I've rewritten this, using, uh, re rewritten this as a square root. Uh, this is a square root on the bottom because it's to the negative a half and my negative sign I pulled out here and I just have 4x squared on top. And um, the simplest way to handle this is to move this term to the left hand side and then cross multiply. That makes it really easy because the root times the root. I lose the root sign and all I've got is this expression right here. Move the x squared over, divide by 2 and I have an expression for x. I just have to take the square root of r squared over 2, and there's the value for x. Then I go back to my substitution. This was the substitution I used for the y. Sub in the x squared. Here's the x squared back here. I just put that in for it. Um, half r squared from r squared leaves a half r squared. And when I take the square root of that, I've got r over root 2. So from here, it's a very easy matter to uh, get the dimensions of the rectangle because we have the values for x and y here. Now, if you want to do this in a, in a somewhat different way, let's go back to the original diagram, put the symbol theta in here, and I'm going to do this using trigonometry. The cos of theta is x over r, and the sine is y over r. So if I cross multiply, I have substitutions for x and y. And when I put those substitutions in here, I've got 4r squared cos theta sine theta. Now, there are several ways to proceed from here. I've, I've seen some solutions where um, they split the 4 into 2 times 2 and use 2 cos theta sine theta and rewrite that as sine 2 theta uh, using a double angle formula. You can go that way, or um, the way I did it, I just left it the way it is, and I'm going to take the derivative with respect to theta, and again I get into a product rule here. This is just a constant so I can factor this out in front. Uh, the derivative of cos is negative sine times the sine plus the cos times the derivative of sine which is cosine theta. Put the derivative equal to zero, simplify, this is just sine squared, that's just cos squared. Now the only thing that could make this zero is what we have in the brackets. So we have negative sine squared plus cos squared equals zero. Now once again you've got several ways of solving this. You can substitute 1 minus sine squared for cos squared. Uh, you could make a substitution here. You could get it all in terms of one variable. But one option is to move the sine squared over divide both sides by cos squared, and then just replace this with a tan squared, because tan squared is sine squared over cos squared. 
And if the angle, if you look at the diagram, the angle has to be between 0 and 90 degrees. And the only solution for that is uh, 45 degrees. And then when you go back to our substitutions for x and y, and you put in the 45 degrees, the exact values for cos and sine of 45 are 1 over root 2. So once again, we have the same values for x and y, and then just double those to get the dimensions of the rectangle. So you've got a lot of different possibilities for solving a, a problem of this nature.